Hello, my name is Jay Lipsy. This video is going to be uh, the process of making large scale drum work. Once you think of it as a continuous process from the preparing of the clay to taking the finished product of the clay is fire. Don't think of it as separate. Nature makes rocks into clay, but man makes clay back into rocks. You have to be nice to your pottery. Doing large scale work, in firing to stoneware, the wear has to shrink one eighth from twelve and a half percent. A large piece may have to shrink this much. So care must be taken in making and drying the piece. The joints have to be put together when there's the proper dryness and wetness. When you're drying the piece on large scale work, cover the top cover the handles, make sure they don't dry too quickly. If you're doing a large planter, cover the rim. Take it off the bat and put slats underneath so it has a chance to slowly move. These are very important in drying. When you're bisque firing, make sure the pot is completely dry. Put it in the kill and heat it up to about 150 degrees for one or two days. When you put a small mirror at the spy hole and it doesn't fog, that means it's dry enough to continue in the firing process. Slowly go up for another 12 hours till you reach cone hole 4. When you uh, decorate the work, care has to be taken that the glazes are the proper thickness. When it comes to the glaze fire, this is a very important process. Large scale work is to shrink again. And in that process, it can split or warp unless you put a small, small amount of grog underneath the piece. The grog acts like ball bearings and allows it to slide. When you're bringing large-scale work up in a glaze bar, preheat the kill overnight. Then uh, bring it up to, in about 12 hours to a co 9 or 10. And cool it slowly for 24 hours. Don't open it until it's down to around three four hundred degrees. Otherwise you'll have dumpty. And I'm going to show you how to make large sectional pots using three different, different techniques. One is the throw and coil method. Second is making the bottom and making the pot top, putting them together. Third, making the bottom, making the top opening to the center, putting them together and re-throwing the top. The first thing to do is prepare your clay. Frankly, all bag clay, just a little bit dry. And if you look at this, you'll say, that's not dry. Well, for throwing little things, it's not. So we're going to throw some big stuff. So you take a little bit of your recycled clay, Mix it. Now the clay bottle I'm using this morning is a uh, high fire stoneware body that's uh, got a little bit of iron in it which is a nice toast color and it has some grog which uh, retards shrinkage and helps keep it from cracking. This process is called wedging. Slap them down at right angles. Do this a few times. This disperses the soft clay with the hard clay. It's absolutely critical that the clay be the right consistency. If it's not the right consistency, you're not going to be able to throw big pots. Next thing is kneading. 
This is called the spiral method. You walk the clay. One hand pushes down. Left hand. Well, uh, right hand, it rotates. It's called the chrysanthemum. It comes from Japan, probably first China or Korea. What you're doing is you're kneading planes of clay. The structure of clay, microscopically, like tiny panes of glass, a little bit of water in between. When the clay is first mixed up, it's sort of in a random pattern. But by <coughs> kneading, they bump against each other and line up. This gives it a lot more plasticity. You think it, kneading is a waste of time? You're going to have a big surprise when you open the kill. Pots with just the same crack as not crack. Basically what you're doing is you're setting up a situation in which pots perhaps won't crack. First thing is to knead the clay properly. I'll roll it up like this. Put to the side. Before you start throwing, get it relatively centered. Center by pressing down. Press your arm. Center, dive in. A little off. Your left hand in, your right hand, your thumbs down, brace yourself. And just hold the clay. Not center. Really large work. You can get your whole hand on it when you're centering it. So you open the clay and do the final centering. They always keep this truncated. an elephant's trunk. Three pulls. That's it. If you use more pull, you have to wet it each time the clay gets soft and kind of collapses. Three pulls. You can use the side of your hand, brace your arm. Press toward the center. Even if you're making a bowl, you still do. And bring the clay out, but you can't bring it back in. Really move that clay. Take it be what you want it to do. Keep the rim thick. You have a dry spot, and your hand's got to catch, and the pot is gone. Keep it nice and wet. You could use your leg to lift. Your leg's much stronger than your arms. Get underneath the clay, squeeze. And bring it on up.
after this is roughed up, let's set a little while. Very carefully take your calipers. And then your twist. That the width corresponds to the width of the piece below. Now comes the fun part. This, I, as I explained, is pretty wet. So it's got to go on here and fit. Basically, you have one shot. So you need to cut it. centered properly. Notice I have a uh, mixture clay on the outside. This is important. To push down and work this in. Just a little more. Do the same thing with my inside hand. So both the inside and the outside have a little extra and working the two surfaces together. The common problem is not being the proper joint because of that crack. Usually in the glaze fire after we've gone through the whole process. So this is a critical step. One of the things about large scale drone work is if you don't do it right, you can't go back. Probably fail. Small stuff you can do anything but take it down the stairway. Big stuff, you have to be totally into it. Okay. So the inside and the outside are done. Now I just take a little bit of this extra play off. the inside. Throw.
kid you not, you know how wet this clay is. Good and wet. But it's nice and wet. You don't have any trouble with the joints. Go back into this uh, in a little while when it's leather hard. Kind of refine it. Another technique of putting the pots together is throw the bottom form, throw the top form, but open all the way to the bottom and don't cut it off. Rough it up, put slip on. Now you cut it off the wheel. Now because when you're throwing, the bottom is always thicker. When you flip it upside down, you got some extra clay, which we can throw with. But you have to join these properly. You did on the other one. In this case, I'm going to re-throw. It's a little bit drier than the other one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work those two surfaces together. Take a needle tool, go about halfway through the clay. If you don't do this, you'll probably get a crack. This is sort of like weaving the clay. Very critical. Then go from the Bottom to the top. My cat comment. Now we're going to work on that transition area. We have lots of clay to throw here. Notice I'm just wetting the top. The rest of the pot is finished. The wheel's not going too fast. See how well braced I am? It's very important.
put this coil on here. Now this surface has been buffed up. A lot of slip put on it. Score deeply. Put it on the inside. It's very critical. Press the clay into the pot. And this pot is still pretty wet. Just dry enough so it'll hold the weight of the upper coil. It's too dry. We have problems with it. Probably crack. Get to the end. Cut this set of 45. Another one over. Cut it. Join those two pieces together. Do the same thing on the inside. Smooth it out a little bit. Now, we have uh, this nice thick slip. What you're doing is firm but very sensitively in the center of this clay. Pressing out with my left hand and in with my right. Cut this top part out. Inside of a hand, it sort of looks like this. Transition. Now you can uh, keep going up with this if you want. In other words, if you want to make a pot six feet tall, not a problem. With this method, you can make this transition zone pretty sweet. This technique is called throwing a foot. 
that in the pot, put lots of clay on it, it's nice and secure down. So look on the inside of the pot first. And establish the edge of the foot. Now if you uh, get the clay just right, you see how easy the clay comes off? I always brace myself, sometimes with my chin. throw something that just comes up like this. So this uh, piece has a little better form. It's alright to be critical of your work. Now this is the uh, same as we did before on the thrown coil method. Uh, rough it up real good. Push this clay in here real good. When you come to the end, push that should have pressed together. Same on the inside. Then you just center this coil using thick slip as before. Lump is where I joined it. Now you have to visualize the form upside down. Air bubble right here. Poke it real good. Push the air out. <clears throat> no video will be complete without throwing a nice hunk of clay. It's about 60, 65 pounds of clay. And like before, it's very soft. It's crucial. It's fairly well centered before you start. I use slip as I mentioned before. Sticks on the pot mark. And center a large amount of clay. Start from the top and work your way down. 
top. Let's go down a little further. Went to uh, Grease Creek. Last fall, 
use my knuckle. So you're using your legs to pull it. Like a knuckle like this. Get it right underneath the clay. Brace your arm. And press. The bronze, this is the bronze tool I made uh, several years ago. I had a quarter inch uh, plate <coughs> bronze. Fits very well on my hand. For trimming with this, hold it real steady. Cut. Okay, here we are the next morning. Nice fat coil. Put it on the inside. A nice slip, <coughs> thick slip on this. grasp the clay. Now, as I said before, the bottom part is still quite wet. Just dry enough to uh, pull the weight of this upper coil. The reason is, of course, the differential shrinkage. And if the bottom shrinks and you put wet clay on top, all kinds of problems. Sometimes it's hard to center that very top part, so you just cut it off. Throw inward. Using a focus slip. This is an iron bearing slip. It's made out of 21% ball clay, 21 china clay, nitrine cyanide 26.5, and silica 31.5. This is the base, and then to that they add 75% uh, red iron oxide. Works on anything. Focus slip. I love these indigenous plants. Some call them weeds. I love the exuberance of these these leaves.
type of unfolding. What I have here is a little uh, hook tool. And uh, basically, go around the areas. Like drawing with a knife. Then uh, after you've done your outline, come in with a flat tool. Take out the negative areas. I like shaving. Yeah, I cut this line. This way I have a nice crisp line up here. Kind of like a frame on a painting. So this ends the uh, demonstration. Obviously, we could keep going up. And I hope uh, some point is that will help you throw some nice big guys. Mm -hmm.